All right, guys, today we're going to be making just a little bit more headway on the LSA supercharger install that we're doing on the Stepside Silverado. And the main objective for today is to get the accessory drive connected up so the supercharger will actually spin along with the engine. Now, I have been thinking of a name for this truck, or I've been trying to rather, for quite some time, and I haven't come up with anything that's catchy enough or anything that I felt like would justify the truck. And naming a project is kind of silly, I guess, in some people's eyes, but I think it needs a name other than just the step side. And what I came up with is, it does have a little bit of heritage and it kind of makes sense. I'm gonna call it the Copo truck. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's kind of a throwback to the old days where you could use a Copo or a central, produ central office production order uh, through your local dealer to build kind of the most badass muscle car. You know, you can mix and match different engines and transmissions and rear ends and some other things like that to build something that was one of a kind and unique. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing on this truck here. So that kind of started with the powertrain. So we have, you know, the all-wheel drive system from a Silverado SS or a Yukon Denali. We get the NV149 transfer case and the eight and a quarter IFS with the one piece passenger side axle shaft. Uh, we're gonna continue that with the transmission. It'll have a 4L80 from a later, or a, not later model, but from a heavier duty truck like a 2500 HD. Uh, of course, we have the power adder. That's kind of central to this plan. We have a LSA supercharger, which would have come on a CTSV or a uh, ZL1 Camaro. And then we just got some little stuff like the dual electric fans from a little bit later model truck, you know, the Hydro Boost brakes, I'll probably throw those on. And even the actual brakes themselves, we can use like either 2005 and later Silverado stuff that's a little bit bigger or even 2019 brakes, which are really massive. Um, so we got all kinds of options and um, originally I kind of wanted to call it like, what if it was a full size cyclone or a typhoon type build, but Instead, I wanna call it the Copo truck because that's kind of what it is. I'm building it as if I had unlimited access to the parts bin from like the year 2000 all the way up to 2010. Whatever, I don't know, it's just a name, but that's kind of what I was thinking. So, uh, on to the project for today. We wanna to get the accessories installed. Um, if you're familiar with the LSA, those came in CTSVs and ZL1 Camaros. They had three different serpentine belts. The outermost one was an eight rib and that was responsible for driving just the supercharger. They had a six rib belt kind of behind that and that would turn, you know, the water pump, power steering and alternator and so on. And then finally they had a third belt, which was a four rib, kind of like the Silverados, if I can actually get an angle of it down there. And the four rib belt actually just turned the air conditioning pump. Now the spacing is all different between the different LS engines, but the, uh, let's see, the eight rib portion actually lines up perfectly with the six rib portion of a truck accessory drive. So normally it would go like the, stop, focus, come on right there. So normally the AC belt would be a little bit back further on the CTSV. The six rib would be somewhere in here and then the eight rib portion would be right here and that would kind of line up with a supercharger. But because we're working with a truck accessory drive, the middle six ribs are actually gonna line up perfectly with all the rest of the accessories. So the kit that we have from Boost District is gonna have a bracket that kind of relocates everything down here. And uh, the reason we need to do that is simply because the LSA blower snout comes right here. Normally the accessory drive occupies the same space. So we're gonna move the alternator a little bit further out. The power steering pump, that's gonna be moved, I think a little bit, um, but it'll give room for everything to mount and put the belt on there to turn the supercharger because obviously we need that. So let's get to it. Let's get working on the Copo truck.
I've got everything mocked up. I'm just kind of doing like a trial run here to kind of wrap my head around how I'm going to have to tweak the power steering lines and reroute some of the battery cables and stuff that go on the back side of the pump and the alternator. But this is kind of what we got here. Um, alternator sits up on top. We've got the plate, a couple different spacers in a few uh, areas. The power steering reservoir is still plenty accessible, so you can fill it up with fluid and stuff like that. Uh, it does use two of the water pump bolts right there and it has some spacers kind of behind it and then there's one more heavy bolt way down there on the bottom that holds everything to the block uh, three pump three pump bolts right there i haven't got the pulley on yet uh, but we do have to bend this uh, power steering line right here just to kind of fit underneath the alternator there so i think what i'm going to do now that i have an idea of how everything kind of fits is I'm going to pull it all off and I'll take this hose off the power steering gearbox down there and I'll try to do the bending out on the bench because I think that'll make my life just a little bit simpler. So I think I have all the modifications done and we can now permanently install the power steering pump and bracket assembly back onto the truck. And that's kind of like the meat and potatoes of the installation. I have deviated from the instructions just a little bit in a couple areas. Uh, for one, I have the power steering pulley already installed and they said to wait until you get everything installed onto the truck. But I've had this whole assembly in and out a couple times, just test fitting it with the pulley on and it seems to go in no problem. So unless I've missed something, um, I'm just gonna leave that on there, but I can always remove it if need be. Uh, the rear bracket here, they say this is optional if you wanna run it or not. I figured it'd be a good idea to have it on there just cause it's one more area of support, but I wasn't able to bend it and get everything to line up perfectly. So all I did was cut this little ear off that bolts to the side of the block. I bolted everything up and then tack welded it in. There's probably like a quarter of an inch gap. So we just filled that in, ground it smooth. Um, everything's welded solid. And I did a test fit before I painted it just to make sure nothing moved while we were welding. So we've got the sport bracket on. The hose is now bent. I originally tried to run it on the bottom side of the return line, uh, but we couldn't do that because it'll when that is clocked down, this uh, little bend right here kind of runs into the steering shaft. So we got to keep that on top of the return line and then just make sure you have enough room underneath the arm of the bracket there. And then I also did relax this bend out here just because of 
the way that this is going to line up, something like that. There will be a fair, fairly tight loop in the hose. Um, so I just kind of eased that bend back to make things just a little bit more open. So anyway, that's kind of the finished product and we should be ready now to permanently install the bracket back under the hood of the truck. So the accessory drive is installed and there's one more thing I was wanting to accomplish in this video, but I actually ran out of time and that's because I spent, uh, it's now Sunday morning, but I spent yesterday afternoon uh, going on a little bit of a road trip looking at a new project vehicle. Uh, I sold the Suburban back in January, I think I mentioned that to you guys, and really the last thing that I need right now is another project, but I have this idea that's kind of floating around in the back of my head and in order to pull it off, I need another vehicle to do it because I, I'll, I don't really want to tell you my plan, but basically I'm going to have some extra drivetrain parts here very shortly and I need a good vehicle to put them in. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a truck, but I'm looking for something that's like got a, that's got good body work and good paint on it because like all the vehicles that I have right now, you know, not counting the AT4, but all my project vehicles, they're kind of they're worse for wear in terms of paint and body. Like the ugly truck, that's got a zillion dents, the paint's faded, and it, it kind of fits that truck. So I don't mind that so much. The step side is a little bit nicer. It's in a little nicer condition, but still like it could use a paint job. So I'm trying to find something that has like good straight body and good lines and it's lightweight and it looks good. And the vehicle that I went to look at yesterday, it was a couple hours away. I got to drive up into the mountains of Utah, which is cool because I've never been that direction. It was east by, you know, a couple hundred miles. Um, and the vehicle didn't work out, but it was just a fun drive, so not a huge deal. But that's kind of, just look forward to some stuff like this on the channel. I am looking for a cool project vehicle. So um, if you're anywhere near Utah, and if you have any like cool vehicles that maybe need an engine or, or I don't know, uh, let me know, drop me an email, tolmanperformance at gmail.com. Um, sidebar aside, the one thing I was hoping to finish today was actually pinning the crankshaft. I have this kit here from ICT Billet. That is the part number right there. I'll put a link up on for Amazon or whatever. Uh, but basically the idea is because we're putting extra load on the engine, there's a chance that the balancer down there could actually slip on the crankshaft because it's just bolted on and it's like a friction fit. There is no keyway like a lot of the older engines had. So with the increased drag, there's a chance that balancer could slip, which could damage the snout of the crankshaft because it's like a very precise tolerance between the two. So basically you have a special fixture that comes in the kit I just showed you and it lines a drill bit up in that perfect spot in between the balancer and the crankshaft. You drill it out to a certain depth, you put a little steel dowel pin in there, it kind of will prevent anything from turning. I am also waiting on an ARP balancer bolt because you have to pull the stock balancer bolt out 
And, you know, I didn't want to reuse, you, you can't reuse the stock ones, but I didn't want to put another stock one in because they're torque to yield, they're a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, so anyway, short story, I'm waiting on a balancer bolt and I'll show you guys the process of pinning the crank at some point, but uh, more or less, this is what the finished product looks like for today. This is the accessory drive to turn an LSA blower using truck accessories. So we have uh, the truck tensioner, the truck balancer, water pump, alternator, power steering, and even the truck idler upper, and they provide a new lower. And of course, a new shorter belt. And that's kind of what we have. All the accessories are still going to be turning the AC. We didn't even have to get into that system at all. Uh, the only thing I will tweak in the future is probably the way that these wires are routed, because right now they're just hanging out back here. Normally, these two branches of wiring kind of get attached near the uh, power steering pump. But now that's moved and they're just kind of hanging out loose. And they, this, like this battery cable was a little bit on the long side anyway. And I was considering, or am considering relocating the battery back there. So I'll probably redo a lot of the way that this stuff is routed. But for now, we at least have the accessories installed and everything's going to be turning. Uh, the, just kind of a, a side note here, this is kind of important. If you can maybe barely see this line right there, it's kind of near the end of that one over there. Uh, basically, the tensioner is just about maxed out in terms of you know, how tight it is, which is exactly what you want because you want as much tension on this belt and as much belt wrap around the blower pulley to make sure nothing slips. So I think we got a pretty good chance of having this thing work properly. I can't wait to get it on the dyno. We've got a, um, the truck balancer, I believe, is overdriven compared to like a CTSV balancer. And then when you combine that with the 255 upper, I think normally the CTSV blower pulley is like a three inch. So we're spinning the, the blower faster on both ends, which I'm really excited about because hopefully we make, you know, I'd like to make around 14 pounds of boost. I think that'd be a pretty good starting point. And if in the future we decide to turn things up, I mean, we'll put smaller pulley up top, bigger pulley down bottom. We might play with a belt drive just a little bit, but I'm really pumped. I can't wait to get this thing out on the road. We've made major headway today. And I gotta say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, so do me those three favors if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the channel so we can reach 100,000 subs. Huge milestone we're trying to reach. Um, drop a comment and click the like button if you wouldn't mind because all those things help the channel grow in the algorithm and that's what helps me to be able to continue to do this stuff so you guys can watch it. So thank you once again. I appreciate it and I'll catch you again soon.